It lurks in the shadows, waiting to take us all. For most, it comes after a long life. For others, it arrives unexpectedly and violently. Lives cut short by the cruel acts of fellow man. What drives someone to kill? Why take the life of an innocent? These questions haunt those left behind, struggling to make sense of such depravity. Hi guys, and welcome back to Crimeico, where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you. Now let's dive in. Our story begins in a place called Japan, an island country in East Asia, renowned for its rich history, vibrant culture, and technological advancements. The country offers a fascinating blend of tradition and modernity, with ancient temples and serene gardens coexisting alongside towering skyscrapers and bustling city streets. One of Japan's major economic hubs is Osaka, the country's third largest city, Osaka is famous for its modern architecture, lively nightlife, and delicious street food, and is home to a plethora of attractions such as Osaka Castle, Universal Studios Japan, and the vibrant Dotenbori District. Amidst the city's bright lights and bustling streets lies a small village called Sakai, home to over 800,000 people. Located on the edge of Osaka Bay, it is known for its knife production, temples, and ancient burial mounds dotting the landscape. But darkness lurks beneath its serene facade, for within this unassuming village resides a demon who lures the vulnerable by pretending to offer them comfort in their despair. Little do they know the fate that awaits as they join him to end their suffering forever. His charming words conceal carefully laid plans to satisfy his twisted desires. Plans set in motion long before they arrived. Our story begins on August 8, 1968, when Hiroshi Mayu was born in Sakai, Japan. His early life remained shrouded in mystery, but disturbing signs appeared once he left home to attend college. In 1988, while studying at the Kanazawa Institute of Technology, the darkness within Mayu first emerged. He attacked a male classmate, attempting to struggle them. This violent act forced Mayu to drop out of school to avoid consequences. Silence followed for several years until 1995, when Mayu found employment. At his new workplace, his sinister desires resurfaced. He physically assaulted a male coworker and tried poking him to death. This time, formal charges were filed. Yet after an out-of-court settlement, Mayu escaped with his freedom, only losing his job. Just six years later, in 2001, the urges overwhelmed Mayu again. He attacked two women on the streets of Sakai, chucking them both into unconsciousness. Police arrested him for these assaults, and a judge sentenced Mayu to one year in prison with a suspended three-year sentence. Prison appears to have only strengthened his deviant cravings. In April 2002, just months after his release, Mayu targeted a junior high school boy, shocking him as well. He received another sentence, this time one year and ten months incarceration. Years of attacks and still Mayu avoided serious consequences. His mild appearance and remorseful demeanor convinced officials he posed little threat but they failed to recognize the darkness dwelling within. Darkness that grew more powerful with each victim that slipped through his grasp. His suspended sentences and early releases gave Mau exactly what he needed, time to plan. Time to find his perfect prey. Soon he would emerge to complete his grim fantasies at last. In 2005, Mau emerged from his latest incarceration. He had served his full sentence this time, nearly two years cut off from society. Now 38 years old, he returned to Sakai under close watch. Regular visits with his parole officer and a 9 p.m. curfew constrained his movements. 
but Mayu's deviant desires could not be contained. Within six months of returning home, he managed to locate new victims beyond the watchful eye authorities. He began frequenting online forums devoted to suicide, communities for depressed and vulnerable individuals seeking death. Mao posed as a desperate soul looking for someone to join him in suicide. He claimed he could procure charcoal burners and sleeping pills to end their misery quickly and painlessly. All they must do is meet and journey to the afterlife together. These suicide websites provided the perfect victim pool for Mao's sadistic schemes. Among their depressed members, he found three willing souls, a 14-year-old boy, a 21-year-old college student, and 25-year-old Michiko Nakamoto. None had any reason to distrust Mayu's intentions. They assumed a mutual desire to escape unbearable suffering. So when he proposed a suicide pact and method, they readily agreed. Mayu suggested a technique popular on these disturbing sites, charcoal burning suicide. The plan was simple. Mayu offered to rent a car where they would burn charcoal, sealing the doors and windows. The carbon monoxide generated would gently poison them into eternal sleep. No pain, no mess. He promised to make all the arrangements if they would simply join him. One by one, his victims consented, unaware of Mayu's true intentions. He had no plans to take his own life of course, only to extinguish theirs for his own twisted gratification. But they believed his lies and promises of a peaceful death. Each arrived to the quiet rendezvous spot expecting to end their suffering, only to have Mao end their lives instead. Mao executed his sadistic schemes with brutal efficiency. One May evening in 2005, he picked up his youngest victim, 14-year-old schoolboy near Kobe. Under the guise of a suicide pact, Mao strangled from the child's body. He later discarded the remains on a mountainside in Izumi, Osaka. Just one month later, 21-year-old college student met the same fate. Lured by the promise of suicide, only be murdered by Mayu's cruel hands around his throat. This victim was also hauled to a remote site and left abandoned, denied even a proper burial. Then in February came 25-year-old Michiko Nagamoto. She too had reached out on suicide sites seeking solace. Exchanging over 20 messages with Mayui, yielded the promise of companionship in death. Upon meeting, he betrayed her trust, ending her life as well by his signature strangulation. Her body was also discarded in the mountains outside town. In the span of just four months, Mayu located and slaughtered three vulnerable souls under the guise of suicide. His scheming delivered the perfect victims into his hands. By posing as a fellow tortured soul, he gained their trust and lured them easily to their demise. Mamu later confessed this subterfuge was the only way to act on his twisted desires. These three lies extinguished merely so this monster could find perverse sexual through their suffering. Their final moments of terror and desperation fed some deviant hunger within him. A hunger awakened in his youth and never satisfied since. But Mayu's depraved deception could only go on for so long. Just five months after this spree began, his last victim Michiko would unexpectedly lead investigators right to him, finally exposing his dreadful schemes. Young Michiko Nagamoto likely assumed she had found a companion as desperate for death's release as she. Their 20 exchanges built enough trust for her to meet Mayu that cold evening in February. But following her murder, Michiko's body was found discarded in the mountains by local police three days later. Her fingerprints identified the remains quickly, yet how she died and who killed her remained a mystery. The remote disposal site and lack of obvious trauma suggested a spy pact gone wrong. But certain clues hinted at a more sinister story. Investigators tracking Michiko's last communications made a chilling discovery. Emails from someone named Mayu proposing they die together. Further digging uncovered the rental car records used for their meeting. Recorded in Mayu's name just hours before Michiko's death, 
These revelations painted a disturbing picture of deception and murder. A supposed spy pact to lure Michiko to her death. Her attacker undoubtedly this Mayu who proposed the plan. A cold and calculated scheme to isolate and kill an unsuspecting victim. An urgent manhunt for Hiroshi Mayu ensued. Officers arrested the 38-year-old at his home in Sakai City without incident just two weeks after Mikiko's body appeared. When confronted with evidence, Mayu quickly confessed to the three even chillingly. He expressed no remorse for the lives taken. In fact, Mayu claimed to experience sexual pleasure from the brutal The anguish on their faces, their helpless terror in those final moments of life excited him. He watched enthusiastically as the light faded from their eyes. Mayu admitted he could only achieve this release through life from his victims. Each scrap of their suffering fed some dark compulsion within him. A desire awakened in childhood that compelled him to attack again and again over the years. When asked about his pack deceptions, Mayu callously replied he never intended to kill himself. The schemes merely granted access to vulnerable prey he could slaughter discreetly. With their deaths presumed suicides, no one would come looking or suspect his involvement. Prosecutors later uncovered Mayu's extensive history of assaults, dating back to college, repeated attempts to struggle various victims. He clearly suffered from a dangerous paraphilic disorder, feeling compelled to choke and kill. Prison and treatment failed to curb these deviant urges. Instead, they only strengthened until Mayu finally appeared to satisfy their perverse demands. His arrest ended this predator's sadistic schemes for good. But three lost lives cannot be regained. Three souls seeking relief from their suffering only to have Mayu violently extinguish it. How many more might have fallen prey if not for the clues left behind? We can only be grateful that Michiko's daughter helped expose his sociopathic deception before even more fragile lives were lost. With Mayu's chilling confession, prosecutors had more than enough evidence to convict him of serial murder. But in March 2007, they still sought the harshest penalty allowed, death by hanging. Given the depraved cruelty and sexual motivations driving his crimes, they labeled Mahu a lust killer undeserving of mercy. On March 28, 2007, the Osaka District Court unanimously agreed. President Judge Mizushima decreed the death sentence, noting the brutal, heartless, devilish nature of Mayu's offenses. He harbored deep psychosexual impulsions unlikely to ever be controlled. For society's safety, this monster must be put down. Mayu's attorneys appealed the ruling as part of their duties. But surprisingly, Mayu himself declined to fight. In a July 2007 hearing, he withdrew the appeal accepting the death sentence for his vicious crimes. Perhaps somewhere in the recesses of his twisted mind, he realized execution was the only just punishment. On July 28, 2009, at the age of 41, Mayu's own life ended, executed by hanging along with another convicted killer, Yukio Yameji. As he himself ended the lives of three unwitting victims, so too was his existence extinguished. Unlike his victims, Mao knew death was coming. He had over two years to prepare before it arrived one summer morning within those stone prison walls. Did he fear it in those final moments? Regret his gruesome deeds? We can only speculate what thoughts raced through his mind as the floor fell away and the noose snapped tight. In the end, justice caught up with this particular monster. Hiroshi Mahu can deceive and kill more. His tragic victims may now rest in peace, but his crimes highlight an unsettling truth. Even in prosperous, civilized nations like Japan, darkness festers within some souls. It emerges slowly over the years, expressed in disturbing deeds. Unchecked, it grows bolder and inevitably consumes lives. Perhaps one day in the not-so-distant future, such brutality will fade into the past not through punishment alone, but through moral progress and social enlightenment.
but until such time, we must remain vigilant. Watch closely for darkness arising and meet it with the full light of justice and humanity combined. Had any dared look closer at this quiet, gentle man living among them, they may have spotted troubling signs. Signs of the depraved desires seething underneath. Perhaps medical intervention could have restrained the monster inside him. Or strict supervision following early offenses prevented such brutal acts. But like so many kill, Mao hid in plain sight until his murderous schemes came to fruition. Society must take heed. True evil rarely announces itself with horns and smoke. It creeps up through tiny cracks in character, through deviant thoughts and impulse control issues. Problems manageable if caught early and treated properly, but left unchecked, these issues may explode one day into horrific acts. Monsters walk unseen among us all, we must open our eyes and minds to spot them and implement every treatment to constrain the darkness before it's too late. Or else we may all become victims when it finally breaks free. This is the solemn lesson society must take from cases like Hiroshi Mayu, the murderer. Only through unity and moral purpose can we hope to prevent more lost souls like Mau from arising. This quest begins and ends with each of us to surround every life with compassion and care so no one struggles alone when darkness approaches. Isolation and suffering abet evil, but compassion is the light that extinguishes it. This is the sole hope we have for the future. Stand together, unified in spirit against the forces that devalue human life. Let no one slip away unseen into darkness. Make each feel worthy of love and prove that hope persists even on the darkest of days. If we follow this path of light, a day will come when no more will suffer the fate of Mayu's victims. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest true crime cases. We appreciate having you as part of our community as we explore the mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and remember justice may stay hidden in the darkest corner. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.